uh, Miami Beach. The smell of salt air and suntan lotion. Beautiful beaches and plenty hey, of Tim, bikini. Hey Tim, want a ride? What the heck are you supposed to be? We're in Miami. I'm dressed like a vice cop. I don't think they dress like that anymore, and they certainly don't drive flashy cars. Besides, you're a fireman, not vice. But you do make a valid point. Miami's growth over the years has been sporadic. Brief periods of proliferation and troubled times brought on by hurricanes, the Great Depression. Then came the popular TV show of the 1980s. Are you going to tell me a television show changed Miami into the cool place it is today? Some people like to say that, but the truth of the matter is, the people that live here made it what it is today. But Miami Vice did bring the city to the attention of the world and brought tourists from all over, which in turn fueled the economy here and made Miami Beach the Riviera of the United States. Well, through good times and bad, Tim, one thing remains certain. Southern Florida is known for its deep sea sport fishing, from tuna to dolphin. Dolphin? The fish, not the mammal to huge monsters like shark and marlin. In fact, today, with the help of one of our friends at Miami Beach Station One, we're gonna be preparing a meal that's centered around a fish that was caught off the shores of Southern Florida. Sport fishing is a great reason to come to Southern Florida, but did you know Miami Beach contains the highest percentage of Art Deco buildings in the world? Art who? It's a style of architecture. Well, Tim, you go talk to that art guy, cause I think there's something fishy going on in the kitchen. I'm gonna go investigate. I think there's something fishy going on with him. But stick around, there's a lot more to see right here on Feeding the Fire. Anything can happen when you step out of the kitchen and into the fire. You're watching Feeding the Fire. Wow, that's a huge fish. This is Vance Eyrick. He's gonna be cooking this fish for us today. Did you catch this yourself? No, I didn't catch it myself. This is a wonderful piece of black grouper. We prefer to catch it fresh ourselves. It was a lot of fun to do that, but when we can't catch it ourselves, we go to our regular fishmonger. His name is Captain Jim, and he would like you to have this hat. Oh. Thanks, Captain Jim. Now this particular grouper is the black grouper. And when you prepare this, it finishes off with a nice lobster and shrimp flavor because of its main diet of crustaceans. There's several different species of grouper, like the Goliath grouper. The record Florida catch was 640 pounds. That takes a big man to pull that baby in. And all day long, too. Oh yeah, you're fighting that. <laughs> you get it up to the boat, you break the line, all that hard work for nothing. We also have some beautiful, fresh, Key West pink shrimp. The shrimp found in the Florida Keys is pink. It almost looks like it's already been cooked. It's sweet, mild, and delicious. Now, you need a big fish like this to feed the 15 guys at the firehouse, don't you? Yes, we do. So how are we gonna prepare it today? Well, we're gonna prepare this. I'm gonna cut this up into portions of about a half a pound a man. We have about 12 pounds of fish here. We're going to make a spice and herb rub Ooh, and pan fry it. And then like we're blackened? It's the same principle, but it's not going to be blackened. It'll be more medium done. It won't be crusty black. It'll just give you a nice flavor when you bite into the fish. And then you're going right. to taste this wonderful white grouper that's going to be very succulent. And then we're going to serve it with a, uh, a Thai red curry and coconut milk sauce. Wow. And for our shrimp today, we're going to have ginger lemongrass saute shrimp. This is going to be a great meal. This is my favorite job. <laughs> it's my favorite fish, too. Well, let's chop it up. Okay. As you can see, it's a nice, firm, white meat. With this, how thick it is, how long does it take to cook? It should cook pretty fast, probably about five minutes. People tend to overcook fish because yeah, they're scared of it, mm -hmm. but I don't. I, I tend to cook my fish where it, just when it loses its translucency, it's done. Now, do we have to do anything to the shrimp? No, uh, Captain Jim was good enough to have uh, peeled them and deveined them for us. He left the tails on because he wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with them, which I, I appreciate he did that because the shell to me gives it an add, added little flavor to it. Really? Sure, because it's, it's got a lot of protein inside the shell and a little fat, and you get more flavor from it. And it's something we can grab the shrimp with. And abso absolutely. All right. And it's prettier. When Jim said we were coming down to Miami Beach for some fun in the sun and some game fishing, I expected a lot more than this and I wanted to see the Art Deco buildings. Instead, we got Hurricane Dennis. While Jimmy's cooking, I'm going to talk to the guys on the department to figure out how bad this can really get. Stick around, you'll see a lot more on Feeding the Fire. 
You just can't come to Miami Beach and not have key lime pie. Vance, these are some really unique limes you have here. What are these, baby limes? No, they're not. They're a very specific lime to South Florida. They're called the key lime. And they're basically the jewel of, of citrus, as far as I'm concerned. They have a very unique flavor. And very the, strong aroma from the ones you cut up. Yeah, if you can just smell the oils oh, wow. coming out. The oils really permeate the air out here. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And that that's what we're going to have. strong lime. Very strong, but they're sweet. They're not bitter. Now, we're juicing on an automatic juicer here. You need a lot of these to make some juice like You need that. a lot of them. And these are a little green, so they're not as juicy as one that would be very yellow. When they're real yellow, like a lemon, is when they're the, the, the ripest juiciest. and the juiciest, yes. Next, what I like to do is put some zest into my juice. It gives it a little bit more spark and it gives you a little kick. texture. Yeah, a little texture, a little kick. So I can zest that up real quick. You're kind of a dessert kind of guy. I heard you like pudding when you were a little kid. Well, how did you find that Shake out? Shake a pudding? Shake a pudding. New from Royal. You're a crazy way to make a snack. Shake, shake, shake a pudding. That was you. That was me. Shake a pudding kid was, it was a product uh, made by Jello Gelatin and it was instant pudding. You put in a little cup, just add water, shake, shake, shake. What a crazy way to make a snack. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget what it. What a crazy way to make a snack. <laughs> yeah, and now you're making a crazy dessert for us uh, today. A great crazy dessert for you guys today, yeah. All right, wonderful. Now that we have juiced all these little guys, it's time to make the pie filling. Each pie takes two packages of cream cheese, softened of course, a can of condensed milk, a third to a half cup of lime juice, depending on how tart you want it. Blend until it is smooth and pour it into a pre-baked pie crust. These will have to chill in the fridge for a while, which is fine, because we still have a lot of work to do if we're going to finish our herb encrusted grouper with coconut curry sauce, ginger lemongrass sauteed shrimp, roast garlic mashed potatoes, and have it ready for a crew of 15 by dinner time. Okay, Vance, we're ready for the uh, rub. This is it right here. Cinnamon, caraway seeds, cumin, dried rosemary, paprika, garlic powder, sea salt, fresh ground back pepper, nutmeg, thyme, oregano, and white pepper. And the secret weapon is our fresh dried chilies. The coup de gras, if the you will. De gras. It's kind of like a sweet, spicy flavor. Yes, the uh, cinnamon and the nutmeg, it just really brightens your taste buds. It's, it's really good. We're going by feel here. We put all our ingredients into a blender. Like most firehouse cooks I've met, Vance doesn't use precise measurements. Touch of this, handful of that. He just lets his taste buds determine how much should be added. Take a pinch. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to eat this fish. How's the texture? Perfect. Doesn't need anything else. Not at all. Oh, I got a little bit of that pepper in there, too. Mm -hmm. That's going to be nice. The, the nutmeg fish. and the cinnamon gives it a sweet flavor that comes back yeah. around again. Like a Thanksgiving pumpkin pie. Oh, yeah. But we're having it with grouper. We need more chili to add just a touch of heat because we're going to serve our grouper with a curry sauce. Nah, two more. Two more. The swirling spice reminds me that we're here during Hurricane Dennis. And I think Timmy's been talking to one of the guys about hurricane awareness. So why don't we go and see what he's found out? Well, be prepared. We all have hurricane kits. Mm -hmm. We all have our water and, and canned foods and dry goods just in case you're going to lose power for a few days. Many people uh, now have shutters. In fact, it's a requirement on new homes. Really? Generators. And uh, a lot of people, again, just board up and leave if they can, if they pay attention and get uh, an early leave. What kind of things do you have in the kits that would you recommend? Any medicines, important papers, Okay. lots of water. Uh, that we recommend, I think, two gallons a day per person if you can, if you can get that much in your, in your supply cabinet. Any dried goods, uh, carbohydrate bars, or dried fruits, anything that'll keep and you can have easy access to. Right. Good flashlight, good radio with batteries. Certainly, because you won't even be able to make a call. Yeah. You're going to be on your own for a little bit. I'll sprinkle, you flip. Do we have to rub it in a little? Yeah, you can rub it in a little, absolutely. Hence the thing rub. Yeah. Let's put a little more on, and we're done. Yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. All right. All right. Let's head on over. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. We'll do it again. You know, we're very fortunate down here 
to have a station cook like Vance, uh, uh, it takes a lot of time and effort really to cook for this many guys, and he puts out a spread consistently. And around the firehouse table, there's a lot of good stories, you know, and uh, and that's something that pulls us all together. We appreciate the efforts of, of a cook like Vance, you know, to put that kind of time and effort in, you know, to feed us guys, and, and uh, you know, it's great. We're enjoying it. Vance mixes a couple cans of coconut milk with a couple packages of red Thai curry paste to make the sauce for our grouper. Red Thai curry is very spicy. It's a wonderful aromatic flavor and a beautiful color. This is very different than a East Indian curry in that it doesn't have turmeric in it and it's very sweet and has hot chili peppers. The English are really the ones that introduced curry to the world from India and curry turned out to be the number one flavor in England. I can see why. It's full of flavor. Yeah, because all that English food is kind of bland. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kidney and potatoes. Who wants to eat that without curry? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you just, that's going to break down. That's going to break down, and we're going to let it thicken up a little bit, and we're going to come back and taste it after it melts, and we'll see if we need to add a little more. Once the fish is coated with the herb rub, it is ready to go into the frying pan with a little olive oil. Check to make sure that the pan is hot enough by dropping in some salt to see if it sizzles. That olive oil helps too, like a good olive oil will enhance the flavor of the fish and the spices. Yes, if you like olive oil, you want to use the best olive oil you can get. Oh, of course, of course. If, if it's too strong for you, don't get the extra virgin. Get a, a fourth or fifth press lighter olive oil. The virgin olive oil is the first press, so that's where you're getting the real rich, acidic flavor of the olive. This aroma coming off of this fish is incredible. It's like the oils in the fish are adding to the spices. I can really start to smell that fennel coming off of this fish now. This is just gonna be a real treat to my palate today. Yes, it is. This is a great way to have it. Little cornstarch to thicken it up a little bit. I don't want it, want it really like gravy. I want it like a, a thin sauce. I want you to give her, give her a taste. Sure. Oh, that's incredible. God. Not wow. too hot? Or is it hot enough? It's hot enough. Believe me. <laughs> it's hot enough. <laughs> too hot? No, not too hot. It'll mellow out in a few minutes. But it's hot enough. The curry really gives it a kick going down. But the coconut mm. milk ah. makes it kind of taste like a pina colada. That's right. Not that firemen like to trick or anything. No, no, not this one especially. Not at this fire station. No. Oh, that's just going to be very good. Being being a firefighter on South Beach is definitely a new experience every day. You know, we deal with different diverse people and cultures every day. You know, it's a, it's a hot tourist location, so different people, different calls. It's definitely an exciting job to be working here. We boiled some potatoes for our dinner, which we're going to whip up with some sour cream and chives, but Vance likes to keep the heroes of his house happy, so he adds a little something extra to the mantra. Roasting garlic couldn't be easier. Just peel the cloves, add them to a skillet or an oven safe pan, drizzle a little olive oil over them, and bake them at 425 degrees until they're golden brown. All right, here we go. All right, Vance. These are Yukon Gold potatoes. I like the texture of them. They're a little bit not Idaho potatoes. No, these are Yukon Golds. They're a little waxier, a little creamier. All right. Oh, Idaho, Idaho's are they? They can make more. It's a little more fluffy mashed potato. Yes. But tonight, this they have a nicer flavor. These have a nicer, richer flavor. Some salt. Ooh, Twenty-four there. ounces of sour cream. We're not holding back. No, no way, Jack. Throw some pepper in there, Jimmy. All right. That that <laughs> was beautiful. <laughs> that was beautiful. A little milk. That, that, hey, we like it spicy at the firehouse. That's right. What can I say? This whole meal is going to be burning. Okay, green onion. Now look at that masher. Don't forget the garlic. Masher. Don't forget the garlic. Garlic mashed. You hold on? I'm holding up. It's hold her new. She's rearing and headed for the rhubarb. <laughs> 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 
Okay, we're gonna do the shrimp now. What was the first stuff you put in? That was sesame oil. All right. And we're gonna put lemongrass and fresh ginger. Oh, excellent. Okay. Now let's pan heat up a little bit. Okay, have at it. Dump them in there. More is always better at the firehouse. Go. Pass that. You think a big piece of ginger like that will be overpowering when you bite into it? Oh yeah. This is just the flavor of the shrimp. Real close. Another three or four minutes. Okay. Okay. Well, Lance, the guys are smelling it. They're getting hungry. They're lining up at the door, are they? <laughs> yes, they are. And now for the sauce. Pull it a little closer so I'm dripping. I don't. I want to on the side a little bit here. Yeah. Is this strong? Some guys might not. Like it so strong, like the spicy peppery potatoes. Yes, that's right. <laughs> manja, manja. Ah, manja, eat, manja. Eat, eat. You don't have to tell me twice. Go eat. <laughs> another firehouse, another successful meal for America's heroes. Vance really made a delicious meal out of some locally caught grouper and regional shrimp. And after dinner, we get the answer to an age-old question: How many firefighters does it take to fix a leaky sink? <laughs> well, Vance, thanks for that excellent meal and inviting us to the Miami Beach Fire Department. But I thought we made key lime pie. Oh, yeah. I can't wait for that. Hey, it's gone. What? Hey! Timmy.